morning guys wow it is beautiful out here today totally totally opposite of what it was uh, uh, yesterday morning overall I slept really good um, I didn't wake up at 6 a.m. <laughs> I slept in all the way till like 745 but uh, I feel feel uh, rejuvenated I got a bunch of energy um, so I'm just uh, breaking down camp right now um, see I got all the gear right there um, so yeah we're gonna get all packed up here and then uh, gotta go across the lake over there to the portage um, so they can tell it's gonna be a hot one today that is for sure the Sun is already super warm so um, I'm gonna have to wear a I'm gonna have to wear a hat, sunscreen, and make sure I don't get sunburn out here, cause that would uh, that'd be uh, not a fun time. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna finish packing up here. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make breakfast once I get to the other campsite. I just uh, really uh, just really want to get out of here and um, get on to the next lake and start fishing and stuff. So. Yeah, we're going to do that, and then uh, I'll get back with you guys once I'm all packed up and ready to launch a canoe out of here. Alright, bye campsite. You're a good one. Alright guys, so we are on the move. We are on the move. So, yeah, you just gotta go across the lake over there to a uh, 55 rod uh, portage. Um, should, uh, should be nice and easy compared to that, uh, was it 100, 160, 170 rod portage we just uh, did to get into this lake. <laughs> so, um, yeah, should uh, be just fine. Um, black flies are definitely coming out. It's definitely black fly season. So, thankfully, I brought uh, some uh, bug spray and some deed on my clothes and stuff. But, sun is uh, sun is definitely beating down. So. I'm going to uh, paddle over there real quick. I might, uh, I might troll, uh, just to see what's up. I don't know how good the fishing is is gonna be today with it being so sunny out, but we'll, uh, we'll find out. So yeah, as you can see, all packed up. Got the fishing rods back there, but it's it's beautiful out. It is beautiful outside. Yeah, let's get to it. Alright guys, made it to the portage. It's gonna be a tricky one, there's a bunch of rocks. Do a little circle around here. Squeeze between these rocks right here. Oh yeah, you can tell a bunch of people are hitting these. Bunch of paint marks and metal marks. Holy buckets. Okay. Well, we made it. We made it. Thank goodness. It was getting uh I wanted to film the I wanted to film the conditions out on the lake, but it was just too rough. I had to focus and make sure I I uh 
kept my weight evenly distributed because the wind was coming from my side. So some uh, there's definitely some good white caps out there. We made it. We made it. That's all that matters. So yeah, now on to uh, Timber Lake. Hopefully, this lake is uh, filled up uh, with fish. So I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll find out, right? So all right, time to do this little uh, this little party here. I got that uh, oh, I got that portage all done. Um, this lake is uh, substantially rougher. Uh, I don't know if you can tell out there, but there's uh, definitely some white caps going on. Uh, the wind's coming from the northeast, so in my dam site's in the northeast corner, so I'm going to be going. Uh, going uh, right against it, but I'd rather be facing it than, uh, you know, having the waves hit me from the side. So, it's going to be a challenging, uh, challenging paddle here. I'm probably going to hug, uh, hug the corner, hug the shore right here till I get to that peninsula right there, and then from that peninsula, I got to head straight across, and that's some big water out there. I can, I can see white caps out there, so... Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. Um, if I can if I can turn on the camera and uh, show you guys what it's like out there in the middle, I'll try. But if not, I'll uh, I'll get back to you once I uh, once I get to the uh, campsite. So wish me luck. <laughs> oh, this is a windy one, Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely rough out here. out of nowhere. It's, it's been calm all day. So, um, yeah, we'll see. It's definitely rough. It's only making me a little nervous here. Halfway through, so we're not going to turn back now. 
could easily come up over my uh, sides of my canoe here. But there's going to be a point where I'm not going to have a choice. I'm going to have to be parallel. So, I'm almost to the other, almost to the other side here. Holy cow. Oh man. Yeah. I got to get over there fast. The wind's starting to even get up. Uh, even worse, and I think I'm, I think I'm uh, in the middle of the deepest part of the lake as this big wave comes right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. We got this. We got this, guys. I'm just gonna keep paddling my my butt off here. Like I said, I don't want to stay stay stagnant here in the waves. I don't want them to be able to push me around too much. They gotta be able to shoot through them some, at least a little bit. Oh yeah. Okay. Alright, so I'm about two thirds. Two thirds! Holy cow. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I waved this almost. Went right over the side of my canoe. Uh, as I was gonna say, I'm uh, about two thirds. Oh man, I'm about two thirds of the way across. Uh, the waves are starting to get bigger. I think I might be. Yeah, I think I'm definitely in the deepest part of the lake here. Uh, yeah, way more white caps now. The wind feels like it's definitely getting stronger, but the campsite's right ahead, straight ahead. So, uh, looks like there's a nice little landing. Uh, I'm not out the woods yet. I gotta stay focused. I gotta make sure I'm fine. That's when you get into trouble. If, you know, you're at the end of your canoe trip, or uh, you know, you see your campsite, you kind of let your guard down, and that's when, uh, that's when accidents can happen. I do have my life jacket on, but this water is cold. I don't want to lose my equipment, obviously, because if I fell in the lake, and I lost my rucksack, I would have no way of being able to start a fire, and, uh, you know, Thankfully, it's, it's a little warmer out, but at night it does get a little cooler, so hypothermia could be an issue. But, alright, I see the landing. Straight ahead. I'm gonna go in there and hunker down. I hope this dies down a little bit so I can do some fishing. But, uh, yeah, as of right now, that's not gonna happen. It's just way too rough out here. And, uh, I thought it was a little, uh, a little sketchy. A little sketchy. I probably, uh, I mean, I went okay, but there's a couple ways that made me a little nervous. Probably would have, uh, probably would have stayed, uh, stayed on shore at the other end. But right when I was in the middle of the lake, the wind started to, well, the wind started to pick up. So, okay, I made it, nice little landing, nice and shielded right here, holy cow, oh, that was, uh, that was a little, uh, nerve-wracking there, guys, I'm not gonna lie, um, 
Yeah, when I got in the middle of the lake there, uh, it seemed like the, either the wind picked up or, or it just didn't seem as bad from the other side, but definitely got worse out there. And, uh, I'm just thankful I got, I got across safe. There was a couple of waves there where it came pretty darn close to coming over my canoe. And, uh, with this canoe being so, so small, and with me having all this equipment on, uh, in it, it wouldn't take that much water to, you know, get in here and sink my canoe. Um, or flip it. Um, but, made it, made it to the campsite. I'm gonna get all my, uh, gear out, and, uh, we'll take, uh, we'll take a look around. It looks like a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent spot here, so. Woo! That was, uh, that was an adventure, that's for sure. Alright, got the gear all off the canoe. Canoe's docked. Still, still windy, but not as much as when I was out there. It's funny how that works, right? <laughs> yeah, this is a nice, uh, it's a nice little campsite here. Good flat spot right here. The tent, it's nice and shaded. Nice view. Yeah, this will work. Very nice. I like it. Oh man, look at all that wood. That's awesome. Oh, I like it. It's gonna work. It's definitely gonna work. So, I'm gonna get some uh, food in me here. And then I'll uh, I'll get back to back with you guys. Hopefully, really hoping this wind dies down because I want to go out and fish. So I guess we'll uh, we'll see. Okay, so I'm out of water right now. I just finished it before my last portage, so I'm gonna have to filter some. So right here I got my little platypus. Uh, it's my platypus um, water filter. Just the gravity gravity water filter. So, I'm going to go do that right now. So it's pretty simple, you just fill up this bag, hang it up, connect the filter, and then it just, uh, gravity takes, uh, takes the rest. There we go. All I do is I just connect the hose to the tops because it's it's a, it's flowing down. Connect that nice and tight, and then this has a little locking mechanism. See a little button there. So all you do. Okay, sorry about that. I need a higher higher vantage point. So. All you do, connect, connect that in here, and there you go, fresh clean water, easy as that, I love that, you know, there's no pumping involved, there's, you know, it's super, super easy, so I'm going to fill up my water bottle here, and then I'm going to fill up my uh, Camelback. And then uh, I should be set for water for the rest of the day. So while that's doing that, I am going to eat. So I'll get back with you guys once I'm done uh, stuffing my face. Alright, see you in a bit. Alright guys, so after not really having any breakfast or any coffee, um, I kind of want a cup of coffee. So instead of building you know, a huge fire just to boil a little cup of water, I'm going to use my little uh, Uhuhu. It's U8. O H U H U. That's O H U H U. Uh, wood uh, wood stove here, and it's really cool. It's really easy to set up. This comes in a few pieces. Uh, 
that. That's it. Then you just build your fire in here, and then you're ready to rock. And then all you do is get your water or what have you. Just put it on there. There you go. It's super cool, super efficient. For what this thing does and you know the quality that it is, um, you know, the competitors you know pay like or they charge like 60 80 sometimes even a hundred bucks for some of these and I think you know what you get it's a it's an amazing deal it's only I think I got it for like 20 or 30 bucks and uh, um, you know yeah it might you know bush buddy you know kind of in my opinion owns this market but if you're looking for an inexpensive wood stove that does a really good job, that uh, burns clean, there's not a lot of smoke, um, I would definitely look into this. Uh, like I said, it's only 20, 30 bucks, and for what you get, you know, other companies are charging 60, 80, to 100, uh, 100 bucks. So I would definitely, uh, definitely check them out. So yeah, I'm gonna just get this little fire, uh, fire going in here, and then I'm gonna get my water, uh, water hot so I can have a nice uh, cup of coffee and enjoy, uh, enjoy the view here. Alright, I think she's warm enough for me. And I don't need it. I don't need it boiling or anything. Just hot enough. Or it makes a nice cup of joe. Because I need to wake up. I need to wake up, man. I'm tired, man. instant uh, Nestle taster's choice. I don't know if I'd call it taster's choice. I don't know, there's just something about like instant coffee. It just has that weird... I can't explain it. It's just that weird instant coffee taste. Hope I'm not just crazy and some of you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Looks like coffee to me. It doesn't taste exactly like coffee, it tastes like instant coffee. But... I'm too uh, I'm too lazy to bring out one of those like uh, like coffee press 
things that some people bring out when they're camping. It's just like the little mini ones. I just can't. I just can't do it. I don't know. I can't bring myself to think that it's necessary. And I can just bring super light things of instant coffee, but then when I drink the instant coffee, I'm like, man, I wish I had, <laughs> I wish I had that coffee press. Ah, instant coffee. All right, I'm gonna drink this and uh, hang out. And then I'm gonna probably set up my camp here. It's still windy out, I'm kind of bummed out. So I think I might try going on the other end and see if it's still windy over there see if it's uh kind of covered at all or anything but yeah i want this wind to die down so i can go and uh go and fish but yeah but yeah i'm gonna finish this coffee and then i'll uh i'll get back to you guys down tonight and then uh then we'll go back out but it's just uh it's just too sketchy so i mean if i was in like a, a fishing boat it's like you know one with a an engine and you know should be fine, but just in a little pack boat like this, it's just too tippy. Like the canoe isn't tippy at all. It's well balanced. It's just the waves coming in, and if I don't have my senses about me at all times, and you know I I lean to you know let's say I lean to get a fish or I lean to you know change the lure and right at right as I lean you know, the wind and a wave hits me from the opposite side and there I go. So, just, uh, I don't know if this lake is just known to be windy 
or what? Because uh, like last night the lake wasn't windy at all. I mean, it could be just because it wasn't windy, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna give it a little bit. I'm gonna hang out around camp, read uh, read some of my book, and uh, yeah, just kind of take it easy. It's beautiful out. Sun's out. Just the wind, just a little too, a little too rough. Like right now, it's the wind kind of died down, but then it just it picks back up randomly. So I, I wish it was it'll just stop for good. <laughs> but that's just how it goes. No worries. Still got the whole rest of the day. It's only like. And it's only like three o'clock, so I still got another five hours, five and a half hours of daylight, and uh, then I also have, you know, two uh, two more days of um, fishing left. So it's all good. Just gonna enjoy uh, enjoy the wilderness out here. Enjoy the sun. Enjoy uh, not being around. Everything that's going on, and uh, yeah, so far so good though, guys. It's everything that I, it's everything that I wanted, except for the hundreds of walleyes and pikes in my boat. But you know how that goes. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, I'll get back to you guys and give you an update if this wind dies down. If not, uh, I'll just check in. Uh, before I start dinner here. All right. All right guys, so as you can see, I got my tents all set up. Um, you guys have seen this tent before. I used it in uh, my solo winter camping video and my uh, uh, backpacking uh, video. Uh, those are like my first and second videos. That was a well, that's a that's a trip. Uh, but anyways, uh, so yeah, I got uh, got it all set up. I had my sleep system in there. On this trip, all I did was just uh, my blow up sleeping pad. And then a uh, 40 uh, degree Fahrenheit rated uh, REI sleeping bag. I uh, really love this sleeping bag. It keeps me warm, compacts to, you know, like that big, like smaller than a football. And then, uh, yeah, and then I just have my tarp uh, right here to put on my put my gear on, uh, just to kind of keep it uh, keep it off the ground. Um, I have it uh, I have it set up uh, in the open configuration, so. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So the open configuration, you know, I have this door open, as you can see. And then uh, in back, I flipped up uh, these two flaps, right here and right there. So that gets a nice, a nice breeze going through. Because last. Last night I, last night I did get some uh, condensation buildup, so I'm just gonna kind of get the airflow going here. And then in here, you can kind of see I have a nice open area where the air can come in. And then up here I have another vent that I opened up. You can see right there I tied that off, so that should uh, should get the airflow going. Um, I'm probably just going to keep the, the door open as well. Um, but yeah, I really like this tent. Um, it's by uh, River Country Products. Uh, they're just, uh, uh, I explain what they're all about in uh, my first and second video, uh, my solo winter camping and my backpack video. But uh, yeah, they're a company out of uh, either Oregon or Washington. I believe it's Washington um, or Oregon. One of those two. But uh, yeah, they're just a little startup company, and they make uh, cool little uh, cool little tents like this. Um, they have uh, um, an A-frame style tent where 
um, you use uh, two sticks instead of just one so like with these um, they don't come with any tent poles or whatever so um, you either use a stick like I did um, or you can uh, or you can use uh, hiking poles but I generally um, I generally don't uh, use hiking poles uh, I know that I know they uh, can be beneficial for sure but um, I just um, I just never use them you know I, I've brought them on trips before and they just take up space so I've just decided not to uh, not to bring them anymore but that's just my personal preference but yeah so they have uh, really cool really cool uh, tents um, and they're uh, very lightweight they pack down this one packs down to about uh, probably the size of a regular size football and uh, it only weighs about I don't know like three three four pounds um, so definitely not as light as like a like a tarp setup but you know I like I like being able to just you know come set it up and that's it instead of messing around with the tarp even though I do like uh, I do like uh, tarp shelters so yeah it's really cool really cool looking so I recommend uh, checking them out um, you know these kind of tents aren't for everyone some people you know have their own preferences and that's totally fine so uh, so the wind uh, did die down a little bit uh, it did get cloudy um, it didn't say in the weather report that it was supposed to rain today but I did feel a couple a uh, couple sprinkles when I was uh, setting up the my tent so oh but I'm gonna go out anyways I'm gonna go like I said I'm just gonna go around uh, to the left here there's kind of like a little cove that I hope is you know a little protected from the wind here but I got to give it a try I uh, I've been waiting too long today I want to get out there and catch some fish so um, I'm gonna do that I'm gonna get all my gear packed into the shelter just in case it does start raining and then uh, and then I'm gonna head out in the uh, in the old pack boat so I'll bring you guys along and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully I don't get snubbed tonight so uh, I'll see you guys in a bit hey what's up guys so the winds kind of dying down but I don't know it's just it's just still a little too much right now for me um, it has been like I said it has been dying down so I think by like seven o'clock which is in like an hour I think it'll be all died down so until then I'm just gonna get uh, get a fire going get some dinner get some dinner in me here so I'm not uh, eating at uh, nine o'clock like I was last night so yeah I'm just gonna get this fire started here and uh, get some dinner in me uh, I'm just gonna have the another uh, serving of uh, veggie chili um, I wish it was a walleye or a pike, but this is how it goes. That's why I pack food, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, it's, uh, it's sucky that I'm not able to fish right now, but, you know, I think, uh, when my, uh, chili's, uh, hydrating, I think I'm gonna throw, at least throw a couple lines out from shore, see, uh, See what that brings me. It's better than uh, better than not fishing at all. That's for sure. So, yeah, I'm gonna get this going, and then uh, hopefully uh, fish for a couple hours after dinner.
Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm so excited to eat that right now. Oh, and then a uh, piece of pita bread, a uh, chunk of the M&M chocolate bar, and yeah, that's gonna be dinner tonight. Oh, so excited to eat. I'm pooped out. I don't know if it was just uh, being in the sun or what, but I am, uh, I'm pretty tired. I think uh, tonight's definitely gonna be uh, an early night. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking probably I'm gonna be in bed by like either nine or 10 for sure. So yeah, but overall it was a great day. It was, uh, it was beautiful out besides it being so windy. Um, the portage went uh, super easy. I really like the campsite. Um, so overall, day two has been awesome. So I'm going to uh, eat my dinner right now and uh, I'll get back with you. Uh, well, I'm really crossing my fingers that this wind will die down, but it's it just doesn't want to stop. It's just been, it's just been blowing all day. It's nuts. But uh, I don't know, I'll get back with you and let you know what I decide on. Um, there is a little sheltered cove right across the way over there like right in here there's a little seems like it'd be sheltered but just the problem is is I have to paddle across you know it's I don't know it's kind of sketchy but I mean you can see how fast that water is going the winds is blowing that blowing that water like it's nothing so I don't know it might just be a lost fishing day but that's fine um, I got to relax at the campsite, read uh, read my book. I'm reading the Final Frontiersman. It's uh, it's about Heimel Korth and his uh, family. Uh, he's the guy that uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen the show The Last Alaskans, um, but he uh, moved out to Alaska and the north of the Arctic Circle, and he's been living there for like three decades. So it's a really really good book. I mean, he got married. Uh, had two kids out there it's it's really incredible how you know him and his family were you know fully self-sufficient besides you know getting getting a couple bush planes a year to uh get supplies and stuff but yeah super cool book i definitely recommend it but all right i'm gonna stop uh jabbering here and eat my dinner so i'll check back in with you guys in a little bit all right i just tried to go out to go fishing and i tried to Across the bay to get to, uh, across the lake to try to get to that quiet bay. Bad idea. Bad idea. It's, uh, that was, that was probably worse than when I first crossed over. Like, holy crap, man. Like, I'm just covered in water. Waves were hitting the canoe, splashing me. I swear, like, a couple of those swells. You know, when you first hit the wave and then you go into the into the little valley of the wave. I swear I thought I thought that second wave was gonna go over to my canoe. It it nearly it nearly did a few times. Oh Oh man. Well, I'm not doing that. Uh I'm not doing that ever again. Um I knew I knew it was be rough. But from out here, you know, you don't really see, you don't really see them, you know. I don't know if it's just because they're far away, they don't look as big or what, but once you get out in the middle of that water, they are, they are big. At least for my little pack boat, they are big. So, I am sticking right here for the night. Um, I don't know if it's just a windy day or if this is known as a, you know, a windy lake. This is kind of like a wind channel. I don't know, but um, I am very grateful that I got back to camp. It was going through my head like, okay, what do you do if you know? What do you what do you do if it flips? You know, and, and I was thinking, all right, well, grab the top of the canoe if you can. You know, screw the fishing stuff. I don't care about that. But uh, oh man, oh. I mean, I'm not shaking, but my uh, my heart's pumping for sure. Okay, well, I'm going to just relax for the rest of the night. That is 
So that's three times today. Three times today that I tried to go out fishing. And every single time, it's just, the wind has been way too rough. The second time wasn't too bad. I just wasn't comfortable with it. But the first and this last time, that was bad. That was really bad. Yeah, now that I look at it now, that's, uh, that water is moving fast. That's for sure. Wow. I'm just so thankful to be back here. Like I was saying, I was just like, it was going through my mind, like, okay, what am I going to do if I flip? Um, what do I save? What do I grab? Do I just swim to shore? Because there was a, there was a, like three, four times that once I got in the, after the first wave and into that valley of the wave, I thought, yep, he's, uh, he's coming over. He's coming over my, uh, my sides here. But thankfully, I just kept I just kept paddling as hard as I could and just to try to shoot and cut through the waves. Cause if I was going slow, I would have been uh I don't know <laughs> I don't know if I would have been able to come back. At least in the canoe. I would have come back. I have a life jacket on but um yeah, I was just paddling as hard as I could. I didn't, I was trying my best not to be fully sideways towards the wave. You know, when the wave comes, it just hits the side of my canoe. I was trying to stay at like a, you know, at like at least some of an angle so it would hit the front, uh, the front side of my canoe, not just solely on, you know, my side here. And I think that helped a lot because the front, the front sides, um, you know, they 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 go up, so it's it's definitely um, they're definitely higher up there. And right here, I mean, this is only I don't know, that's only like maybe ten inches, maybe a foot to the water from the top of my canoe. I mean, it's not a lot at all. So just too bad I really wanted to fish man I really wanted to really fish hard today and it just didn't happen but it's alright I still got two more days um so hopefully uh hopefully this next lake is a little better and then on the final day I'm going on this little lake so hopefully Hopefully it's not as windy the next couple of days. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because it was, it was a little windy when I was paddling out of the, my campsite before this at uh, Freer, Freer Lake. F-R-E-A-R, -E Freer. Freer. Kind of a weird word, but um, it started to get a little windy, but uh, not like this. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out tomorrow if this is just a fluke, if it's just a windy, windy lake or what, but, yeah, feels good to be back at camp. So, I'm just going to relax, get the heart rate down a little bit, <laughs> read a little bit more of my book, and, and I'll probably, uh, I'll probably check in with you guys before I go to bed. Like I said, I'm pretty, like I said earlier, I'm pretty pooped out, so I'm probably going to head in at like 9, probably 9, 9.30. No later than 10, that's for sure. So, yeah. Wow. Well, definitely an adventure, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll, uh, I'll check back in with you. So I guess uh, I'm going to go over and uh, so you guys kind of have an idea of, you know, the route that I've been taking. So as you can see, I'm in the uh, Superior National Forest, the Timber Freer. Uh, canoe area. Uh, how they uh, their little description is uh, the Timber Freer canoe route, named after the Timber Lake and Freer Lake, offers the opportunity to experience a wilderness type canoe trip without the permit. You will find backcountry campsite campsites are similar to those in the Boundary Waters canoe area wilderness, with steel fire grates and outdoor latrines. 
Please respect this area as you would a wilderness by packing out what you pack in. So every lake, um, except for Lost Lake, has uh, you know these little rustic campgrounds. And then also, you know, uh, the Superior National Forest allows dispersed camping. So if I, let's just say this campsite today that it was taken, um, I could find, you know, another uh, area that's not a campsite to camp, which is nice because in the Boundary Waters, um, you can't do that. You can't disperse camp. You have to camp at a campsite. So I started right here at Whitefish Lake. This was, uh, this is the little canoe, canoe put in site here so when we first uh when i first got with you guys i was on the portage right here the 74 rod or i think they said 65 rod but this is a 74 rod uh portage into elbow lake and then i canoed uh on the left left western shore right here up to this portage and that was the that was the long one that was 140 rod portage and that was in and that brought me into lost lake it was uh, the really small lake, uh, and there's no campsites there. But like I said, I could have, you know, I could have dispersed camp there. But I, d I just, uh, I wanted to get up to Freer in, uh, the first day. So, uh, and then I just uh, canoed across Lost Lake here, and then did the 128 rod portage, and then got into Freer Lake, and that's where I was yesterday. And I camped uh, not at the first campsite right here because it was kind of close to the portage. And, um, you know, obviously it's not busy up here, but I'd rather not have a campsite next to a portage. So I went up here to the far, uh, far campsite on the western shore and camped there last night. And then today, went from Freer Lake, went uh, east across the lake, and then, uh, and then went into this portage. At first, I accidentally... At this little peninsula here, I went, uh, took a right before it, and I ended up getting into this little channel right here. So I had to paddle all the way back around, and then go around the peninsula, and then I finally found, finally found the portage. The this portage was kind of kind of tough because right when I got there, there was no portage sign or anything, and there was just uh, a put out site or a put in put out site uh, area. So I. I took my canoe out, and then on here it doesn't say um, it doesn't say two uh, two portages. It ended up being two small portages because this just says one big one, 59 rods. So I got out and I started following what looked like to me to be a four wheeler ATV trail, and that ended up just going uh, uh, parallel to Freer Lake. So I had to turn around put in to this little like uh, swamp type pond thing. I paddled a little bit more east and then I finally hit the actual uh, portage that was actually that was labeled and it had a sign. So and that was 59 rods. So I mean I don't know how how big the first one was. It wasn't big. It was only probably 15 to 20 rods. But uh but yeah so that so the portage today was a little, uh, was a little rough, but I'm, I made it. So yeah, so I got out right here, and then uh, that's when I got with you guys, and I had to paddle north across the middle of the lake with a full loaded, uh, my fully loaded pack boat, and that was scary. Um, you know. That was almost as scary as what just happened because, you know, with the fully loaded pack boat, you know, my, my canoe sits lower. Um, waves could easily come over, come over the, uh, the sides. Um, if I had a fully loaded, uh, if I had a fully loaded pack boat just now, me coming back just now, um, I, I probably would have taken in water because, like I said, there's three, four times where, I I thought uh I thought once I was in the valley of the wave the wave the second wave was just gonna topple over me. Not over me, but over the side of my canoe. But so did that. Now I'm up here and the this is and I'm at the only campsite in this whole lake. So um it's pretty cool that 
uh, they let you disperse camp in uh, national forests because if I, if you only had uh, if you could only use a campsite, I would have had to either backtrack back to Freer or portage another uh, another portage and hit and hit uh, elbow. So tomorrow, uh, it's just a small little 38 rod portage, which I'm looking forward to, and then uh, I'm going to be back on elbow. So it's going to uh, back on elbow lake the the lake that I portage into from Whitefish. But I'm going to be on the far northeastern side of it this time. And I don't think I'm going to camp at this campsite because that's right next to the portage. I'm going to go down through this little channel. And then I'm going to take this, try and take this campsite um, that's on this peninsula right here. And then hopefully, um, hopefully this little bay right here, um, I'm hoping that it's good fishing. If not, this bay right here. There is a little tiny bay right here that I'm going to try and hit. But that's if the wind dies down because, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing what I did today again, that's for sure. So once, I, uh, once I'm done uh, there uh, tomorrow, then on Thursday, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go across the lake to the eastern, uh, eastern edge of it. And then uh, hit this 30 rod portage into Finger Lake and get this, uh, hopefully get this campsite right here. And this is a smaller lake. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how the fishing is. But I'm gonna stay there uh, Thursday night and then Friday is when I leave. So I'm gonna take this 30 rod portage and then go down the lake here and then take the 74 again, 74 rod portage back into Whitefish and then I am back at the canoe uh, put in sight. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a cool little loop. I really, uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. The one, like I said yesterday, the one sucky part about this is um, they do allow motorized boats in here. Um, I actually saw when I was on this the portage into this lake today. I actually saw that dude uh, who I saw in his little motorized uh, fishing boat. I saw him uh, where he, I guess, docks his, his boat. I, didn't, I don't know if that, that was allowed. But he, uh, it was like a little four-wheeler trail. And then, uh, and then there's his trailer. And then his boat was in the water. So I, I wasn't aware that you could do that. But, um, you know, whatever. More power to him. I, you know, I... I'm not against, you know, obviously I love fishing and, uh, you know, it's awesome that people want to get out and fish, but I think it's kind of odd that they allow motorized boats, you know, in a canoe when it's specifically called a canoe, the canoe route. So, but that's all right. No worries. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the route. Um, I, I do recommend it there. They also have, uh, four, four other, um, four other uh, canoe route loops uh, throughout the National Forest that I want to hit up. And they also have a, uh, a canoe route where it's along along a river and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't think I'm going to hit up another one this year. Well, maybe in the fall I will, but this August I plan on, uh, um, I plan on uh, going to uh, uh, the Superior National Forest and um and or not the superior national forest the boundary waters um and do a cool little do a cool uh another five day trip in the boundary waters
Hey, what's up guys? So it's like nine o'clock right now and I am ready for bed. I am so tired right now. I don't, uh, I don't remember the last time I went to bed this early. <laughs> but uh, yeah, today was a great day. Um, a couple uh, couple of rough spots there, but uh, it's, uh, it's all right. I made it through, I'm alive. So that uh, that's all that matters. Um, other than it being windy and kind of having a tough portage and you know not uh, not being able to fish at all today, um, you know it was it was a great day. You know I enjoyed uh, enjoyed the sunny weather, did some reading, made some great food. So overall day two was uh, was a success. So um, I'm gonna hit the hay here. Uh, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow and head on over to the next lake and hopefully cross my fingers hopefully do some fishing so yeah I will uh, I'll see you guys in the morning see ya